Right, what is going on ladies and gents? Welcome back to another video. Um, so me and Tim are here to start our series, TT Talks. Um, so this is episode one, we're gonna be sitting and talking through our leg workout um, and kind of what's the plan for this series. Then? We're gonna just release weekly training videos. Um, we're also gonna do like meal preps, nutrition, that side of things. And we're just gonna kind of make it into just a little chat about it all um, and just release it on alternating channels every single week. We're gonna make it like proper casual. Yeah. We're just kind of just, try just and, talk. You know. Yeah, try and upload every Friday. Um, so we're gonna try and film once a week, do this commentary once a week and get up every Friday, hopefully on alternating channels like Tim mentioned. Um, so like I mentioned, today is legs one. Yep. Um, so Green are actually training with us on this session as well. Um, so yeah, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Um, I'm just gonna sit here and commentate over like a 20, 25 minute workout. So. Right guys, so we kicked off the leg workout with seated hamstring curls. We've done this to activate our hamstrings because to be honest, all three of us have lagging, uh, lagging hamstrings. And so we started with this because although it's gonna activate our hamstrings, it's not gonna actually exhaust them and fatigue them enough to take anything away from our compound lifts. So what we did, we did three sets. We did a top set, which was um, six to nine reps. Um, I stacked it and then we did two back off sets of 12, of how long many was it? 15, 12, 12, to 15. 12 to 15 reps. So we did two, one top set of six, nine, and two back off sets of 12 to 15. Um, so yeah, I didn't quite stack it like what Tim just mentioned. Um, but with these, you really want to focus on driving your heels back and really squeezing your glutes, I find is the, like, the best way to get that activation in your hamstrings. And keeping it really tight. You want the pad really as tight as you possibly can on your quad so it's uncomfortable. And you want to press yourself in, you want to lock yourself in. And, uh, and go from there, yeah. Um, so yeah, like to mention, this is kind of like the movement to get our legs warm, get some blood into the muscles, and then moving into our first compound movement, which is gonna be a hack squat. So for me, I personally hate this movement. Like I find it really uncomfortable. Um, obviously it's a really hard movement to do, um, a hack squat. Better than squatting, but it still is quite uncomfortable. So we did a working set of six to nine reps. Yeah, working set then, of six to nine reps, and so then top set. And then a back off of 12 to 15. Um, so very low volume. This is the kind of training that me and Tim have been doing a lot recently. You only need two sets. If you train at maximum intensity, you only need two sets. You can't, you can't really recover from that, especially on such a compound hard exercise like a hack squat. Like we had to take a five minute rest between the hack squat and the pendulum squat yeah. because we were so fucking fried. Uh, typically with your top set, give everything. This is the set that you come into the gym fearing. Give everything to that one set. And uh, you can take no more than three, four breaths in between, but you can have a little pause in between reps if you really need. With a back off set, I like it to be continuous. And so it's a continuous 12 to 15 reps. And if you've got more in the tank, give that, give more. Don't just stop at the 15 cap. But yeah, we also wanna, you wanna try and force your knees out and don't let any hip, don't let any knee flexing on the way up. You wanna go down as deep as you possibly can. And we have just a neutral stance, so it's equally working the quads and the glutes. Whereas on the pendulum squat, we had a low and um, a close grip, a close stance that is working the quad and the outer sweep of the quad. Yeah, and also with high squat as well, I tried to go a little bit more narrow, pointing your feet out ever so slightly, so you're putting more emphasis on your quads. Um, and that is something that you've told me to do previously. And it um, helps with keeping your knees out because you can follow yeah, the path of your feet. And we both suffer from problems with our knees. Yeah. So as you can see, we're both wearing knee sleeves as well, which is massively important for both of us. If I didn't have my knee sleeves on, I'd feel uncomfortable. I'd feel like my knees aren't protected. So knee sleeves are definitely something that I'd yeah, invest in. 100%. Look at them, although like, they're expensive, try to get some SPDs, they are the best. And look at them as an investment rather than just yeah. losing money because they will save your knee health massively. Yeah, well I've just ordered some SPDs and I've literally worn them once and they're actually absolutely amazing. They're really, how, how thick are they, seven mil? Yeah, seven mil, seven, seven mil nano, nanoprene, something like that. Which is like thick. proper they're thick. Like thick. The, the knee sleeves I'm wearing in this clip is, they're nowhere near as thick as the ones that I've just ordered, the, these, uh, the SBDs. Um, and the ones that I was using in this video is just, they just weren't good enough for me. Um, you want to find knee sleeves that are going to be really tight as well. Um, like uncomfortably tight. Like, Basically, when you've got them on, you might feel, yeah, uncomfortable, but in the plane that you're working in, so like a squat or a press, they'll feel great. If you try and slightly move out of that plane or do like, it's, do you know what I mean? When you try and move your yeah. knee slightly, you feel so weird. I wouldn't yeah. recommend wearing them on like a leg extension or a, um, 
a leg, um, a leg curl or something like that because they don't work in that plane very well. I mean also with knee sleeves as well, I'd get a pair that physically make your legs feel slightly uncomfortable. So like the other day when I was using my knee sleeves, my legs were like going numb. Yeah. I couldn't physically feel my legs. It's like inclusion training. Yeah, because, <laughs> because the knee sleeves were so tight, but I knew my knees were protected. They felt good, I felt comfortable, I felt strong, I felt stable. Um, and I really can push out them extra reps. Um, I really do up the weight with them quite easily. You can really spring out of, oh, yeah, out of, a, out of a hole in them, especially yeah, when you have the reflex at the bottom. So what was that? Three plates per side for eight? Yep, three plates. Have you beat that since? Yeah. The other day I hit three plates for 11. So that goes to show, that was two leg workouts ago, and then the next leg workout he's beat it by three reps. And that is the kind of progression that you should be seeing at the start, because uh, you've switched to low volume, haven't you? Yeah. I finally broke the four plate, and I put a four and a five, and I believe I did six reps, which is another yeah. PR for me. And I actually haven't done that machine since, because I trained back home and then I've done legs two twice a so yeah. And you'll also notice that we both shout, like we pro both proper shout at each other, and that, yeah. is, that is key. If you want to train hard, you need to find someone that's going to train hard as well and really push you, really shout at you, really motivate you. Like literally throughout these sets, I'm literally telling Tim, don't fuck it up, bro. Don't fuck it up. Don't that's drop my, the weight. That's my don't drop the weight. Don't fuck this set up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't drop it, don't drop it. And you need that, you need that in your ear just to get them extra reps. And just like um, pride, innit? You don't want to like, you, yeah. when you said don't fuck this up, I don't want to fuck it up now, you yeah. said it. Like you just, You'll be gutted. I but am need, gutted if I fail. But you need to find someone that is going to be willing to push you to that yeah. the next level. You don't want to be training with someone who isn't willing to go to that next level. Really push past like your mindset, completely past your mindset. Um, it's, what is, what's the saying? Mind over matter. Mind over matter. It yeah. literally is. It literally is. It literally like, is. Especially with sets like these, you need to absolutely grind out the rep but like every single rep i could have just give up and failed like that every rep yeah. you can on this machine if you sink into the hole it's like the abyss you don't yeah. know if you're going to come out or not but you no. just drop to mind over matter just drop in and just fucking grind it up it's the same with most compound exercises yeah. give everything to your top set and you're also it's hack squats is one of the movements that you'll put a weight on you'll do one or two reps and you'll literally feel like oh this is tough, like I can't do any more. But you, if you put your head in that in that mindset that you are going to absolutely grind out these reps, you will get at least another ten more, and you'll, like, you'll, you'll surprise yourself how much you can do if you really do put your put your mind to it. Like we really warmed up and we yourself. had a, we went like nothing a plate, two plates, three plates, four yeah. plates. And I was saying, I remember vividly saying on like two plates, like this is feeling rough, and then the three yeah. plates kind of felt Bear, similar to two. Bearing in mind. I went out the night before this as well. Yeah, yeah you so did. I was, <laughs> I was okay. slightly hungover. I think we were training about uh, yeah. two o'clock. Yeah. Um, oh, bro, like, you would gone out and I was ill as fuck. Do you remember? Yeah. So we were both, we were both f fucking like shit, and we still trained this hard and hit. PRs. And we both hit PRs on pretty much every movement. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that is that is the point. Like I remember my set of doing three plates of eight reps. I remember I was seeing stars like. I was actually seeing stars and that is the point you want to go to when you with your training you really don't want to push yourself you want to take yourself to that limit um, and yeah and this is also a monumental PR for me because I think I think I got 20 reps on yeah. three plates I and, think. and also with this movement you really do want to focus on the eccentric part um, you do not want to drop into the way you because that's what a lot of people do they get to the top they're like big breath and then they'll just drop, drop. But you don't want to do that. You want to control it, um, really get into that hole, and then drive out of the hole. Really nice and slow, eccentric, powerful, concentric. And drive, con up concentric. Through, drive up through your heels. Yeah, flexing, the, pushing them knees out, not letting them cave in. Um, yeah. And wearing a belt for this will also help as well, just to keep your core tight, keep your back tight, um, because it could be a movement that would actually hurt your back. So yeah, you can. Like, you can have some slight like lumber rounding at the bottom on this yeah. movement so uh, a belt does help and I like to wear a belt on heavy squats um, just because I feel I feel way more secure and I feel psychologically that I can give two three more reps without like my back giving way and like typically on compounds on for back I on my top set I wear a belt on the back off I won't um, but on legs I like to wear a belt because I don't want my back giving in first <coughs> I want my legs when I'm training my legs it's very so, similar to wearing knee sleeves as well it's yeah. kind of like a mind a mind thing very like a placebo 
effect where you feel more comfortable, you feel more secure as soon as you've got it on, you feel like you can get them extra reps out. It's like a psychological thing. Um, so as soon as you put a belt on, you know that you're ready to hit a top set, you know that you're ready to yeah. go heavy. Um, so I wouldn't warm up with a belt, um, to be honest, would you? No, 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 I just stuck it on for the top yeah. set. Moving on into our third exercise, this is going to be a pendulum squat. So it's the two uh, same rep ranges as before. Two sets, we've got a top set of six to nine and a top set of 12 to 15, back, uh, back off set of 12 to 15. So again, giving everything to this top set. Um, this time we do have a lower, well I particularly have a lower uh, foot placement and a closer foot, foot placement. So it's pretty much quad and the outer sweep. Um, yeah, with pendulum, not all gyms are gonna have this. Not all gyms will have a cybex hack squat, but you should have a, some form of 45 degree hack squat in your gym if you're training in a bodybuilding gym. This is a rarer piece of kit, and um, it's a brilliant piece of kit. I just think the mechanics of this is so forgiving, especially on our knees. Uh, I think the fluidity of the machine just really takes all pressure and it's so forgiving on your knees. Um, so I actually, I actually like to load this machine heavy. And um, again, we've put it in for the third movement. Um, for the second compound and yeah as i said give everything to this top set and make your back off set more continuous still giving everything to your back off but try and make that a continuous set whereas your top set i do allow some breathers um, and very similarly to the hack squat once again you don't want to drop in to the weight you want to be nice and slow um, nice control really keep your core tight um, so here's me hitting 35 kilos for nine reps which i was fairly happy with i actually beating that since I think I did 40 kilos for nine Decent. the other day so up to by five kilos and I feel like that is something that this low volume kind of training training program in do. is I've been making an unbelievable amount of improvements recently even with my form my form's been better my focus my mindset in the gym knowing that I've only got that one top set and that one back off set knowing that I'm not going to be doing like five or six top exactly. sets ridiculous amount of sets um, my mindset's been so much better. I've been much read, been much more ready to go into the gym and just smash the top sets because you can get yourself ready the next day. Now Tim has given me like a program, and I know exactly what I'm going to be doing every day. I can get myself ready the day before and really do kind of get myself ready. You go in the gym, to go in. Yeah, you know what exercises yeah. to go in. You've got to fucking beat that this week. Yeah. Oh, so you failed that week pretty much. Every, yeah. if, not necessarily adding weight, but you just <laughs> adding one rep. Like I'm at the stage now where if I add one rep to my top sets, then I'm buzzing. As long as I beat you by one rep, and um, yeah, my numbers are still flying up, and I'm nearly five weeks into prep, and I expect them to fly up for another five more weeks. So after that, we switch to a muscle round, a six by four of single leg press. Now this shit is fucking horrendous. Um, five breaths in between, so four reps, five big breaths, holding it up four reps again, we do that six times, and um, this will show from the side. If you get on stage, or even just just showing your physique off, from the side, this will fucking tell. This 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 ingrains detail into your legs. Um, and yeah, you don't need a lot of weight. It's, it's brutal, isn't it? Just you one big set. You certainly do not need a lot of weight. I went into this, I think with two plates on one side, one plate on the other, so. This is the first time of me ever doing a muscle round, um, so I, struggled to say the least i think i only got like halfway through ended up dropping the weight on me like literally my leg just caved in the weight just dropped on me um and yeah this is definitely something that burns and you will notice that on my set i don't my rep range isn't the best um i don't sit too deep into the rep which i should have done a lot more deeper so you want to force your knee kind of to your shoulder you want to force your knee as far back as possible um, with these, obviously, when you're doing so many reps, it's, a, it's quite difficult to do that um, as your leg is literally physically burning and you can't physically hold the weight up anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, my rep range wasn't good enough, so Tim's is much better here, um, really forcing your knee backwards into your shoulder. Um, and similarly, if you do just a standard leg press, you really want to force your knees over your shoulders, and not like fold in, but really do allow a stretch in your hamstrings. The deeper you go into the leg press, the more benefits you'll see from leg detail. And this, this exercise is about actually the weight on it. This is about metabolic stress. This is, this is about filling them legs with blood and then leaving it while you're resting with it under tension as well. Because that's probably the worst bit. 
moving the moving the leg press is fine, but when you're five, four, five, six sets into this and you're just holding that fucking leg press at the top, it's horrible. So before it was more about mechanical tension um, with the first two exercises, with the first three. This is more about metabolic stress, more about not the pump, I don't like to say the pump, but getting blood into the muscle and forcing those legs to grow. Definitely a tough exercise if you are. And it's a bit of a weird one because you've you've got one foot up, one foot down. You've got one foot um, dangling around. But it is quite, it's quite nice. Yeah, it is nice. On special on that one as well, nice. it's much nicer. Once again, another machine that you probably won't find in many gyms. Um, it, it, a leg it mimics the squat a lot more than the leg press, doesn't it? Yeah, it's higher, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's a lot more quad focused because this was quad focused day. Um, whereas the one you can just see behind us, the yellow so leg press. Drop, dropped on me. Oh shit, yeah, I forgot about that. Almost got near my face. <laughs> you were looking <laughs> there actually. I, know, I was. That's all I wrote. Oh. So basically, what are we going to fifth this? exercise, uh, we went on to some. So fifth exercise in, we went on to leg some extension. leg extensions. So we did three sets of 12 to 15 reps, I believe. Yep. Um, again, this is just a staple in any, any, any leg workout. This is the quad builder as well, in my opinion, especially for your teardrop. Your VMO will blow up with this. Take your knee sleeves off, super slow eccentric, and you don't have to pause at the top, but make sure you are fucking squeezing as hard as you can at the top. Make sure you can feel that whole leg squeezing in. Um, yeah. And then a slow eccentric down again. Yeah, probably half a second at the top, really. Yeah, it? it doesn't matter. Yeah, it will probably be about half a second, a second, but don't like do a three second pause. As long as you are just squeezing every single fiber there. <laughs> as long as you're squeezing every single fiber, then that's, that's absolutely fine. But yeah, again, this is a three by 12 to 15 and um, yeah, we're keeping the weight the same throughout. I like to have my toes turned out. I feel like that uh, creates a greater connection with my VMO. Uh, that is my, that's your teardrop or your quad. And uh, yeah, just a, a staple leg exercise. Really. And just a basic point that I want to put on, put across, is when you're training legs, you want to obviously hit different parts of your legs. Um, so we started with hamstring curls. We went into a hack squat, more quad dominant. Went into a pendulum squat, which is more quad dominant, and the it was quad dominant day. It's a quad dominant day. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. just started with hammy to, you know, because we got lagging hammy, so we still want to hit. Them. But then legs two, our second it's, rotation it's of hammy. legs would be more hamstring. And emphasis. we both have uh, RDLs on pull day, so then we're hitting hammies again on a pull day. Yeah. And then obviously finishing up with both of our weak points. Well, definitely both of our weak points. Calf raises, building up some calves because we both need some calves, especially with Tim stepping on stage. He needs to have some calves, <laughs> he needs to grow some calves. I'm sorry, bro, but uh, hopefully one day I will one, have one a calf. Day. I just feel like it's just bone and tendon, and that it can't possibly just skin. It's just skin, bone, tendon, ligament. There is no muscle there. Um, but yeah, what do we do? We do three by 20. Yeah, we did. seated calves. You want to really up your volume with calves because they're a small muscle. Um, well, and small muscle and they take weight, they take your load all day every day, so like lower rep ranges aren't going to work as much for calves and then I think we did 3 by 15 on here as well, so again two high, two high rep ranges. And we did 10 second pauses as well. So, so on this one we do a 10 second stretch and then we do, <coughs> oh yeah, so on this one we do a 10 second stretch, 10 reps and then 10 second stretch and another 10 reps, yeah. so again, it's 20 reps with two second stretches in between. Because um, if you stretch out your calves, you'll be able to form a greater contraction. You'll be able to go higher. So you'll be able to plant your flex higher and get a greater contraction if you stretch it out beforehand. And that concludes our leg day. Yeah, and also just another note with calves, you'll, it's a movement that you're not gonna enjoy. It's slightly uncomfortable. I personally find it difficult to fully emphasize my quads when I'm calves. doing, yeah, my calves, sorry. Yeah, I personally find it very hard to fully emphasise my calves when I am doing seated calf. Do you know why that is? What when you so like you yeah, when you're doing seated calf, you struggle to get a full yeah. stretch at the yeah. top. That's what I mean. So and a full that's contraction. A, yeah. So when you're like that, you've struggled to get like really high. Yeah. Yeah. So that's because you've got a tight tendons. So that's why with this 10 second stretch, that's stretching your tendons out, so they're going to be more flexible, and so that you can plant a flex higher. Right. Okay. So basically, if you do have trouble actually pressing high enough, so like a plantar flex is when your foot goes like that. So if you if you're struggling to get a full contraction because you can only come to there rather than there, it's good to stretch it out beforehand. 
um, and that's why we do it on the standing ones and if you if you struggle with that as well do it on the seated ones beforehand or just do stretching on your calves before you do either exercise and I'd also try and drive through your big toe yeah that's something that I've always tried to do and I literally put my hand on my calves so I can feel physically feel my calves and so I can get that mind muscle connection like as well people might think that's stupid like you might see people holding the biceps like touching the when I do leg extensions I typically uh, touch my VMO, my yeah. teardrop, because you can feel it contracting, and then mind to muscle, psychologically you think, oh, that is working, yeah. that is contracting, and you <clears> actually <throat> get a greater pump. Like you, like you do come off that set with a greater pump than the previous one because for for some crazy reason that it does have a greater mind muscle contraction if you're just thinking about contracting. And that's like sometimes if I'm doing cable flies, um, I will literally get someone just to touch, touch yeah. my chest. So if I'm training with Jacob, I'll. I know it looks a bit weird, but I'll literally just prod his chest. Yeah, give it a little squeeze. Um, I'll literally prod his chest and just say, feel that, squeeze there, feel it. Um, and once you, you can touch it, you then you have that mind-muscle connection. Yeah. And it's something like Steve Cook used to preach about all the time, that mind-muscle connection. I feel like when you get and leaner I definitely as well. Believe in that. I think it's similar. What's um, going on? I don't know, I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> um, earthquake. Yeah, there's earthquakes here. But I, I feel like when you get leaner as well and you start seeing striations and you start seeing like, muscles popping and fibers again that's another psychological i find that like if i'm doing chest slides i can see some striations i feel again i get a greater mind muscle connection rather than touching it as well so if you are leaner that might help to look in the mirror and i think we actually did we finish up this workout with our duct tape. yeah that's what i was going to say we never got to put it on the video we never filmed it because this video was interrupted by greeno smashing <laughs> my camera so it kind of took a downward point a big downward spiral when uh when i picked my camera up and it was smashed to bits but after that we did do abductor and adductors so i had to do them pretty much at the end of every leg workout and we just did a muscle round of 20 15 10 so um 10 seconds in between 10 to 15 seconds 20 reps uh, 15 and then 10 on both and I advise warming up massively on both those exercises because you can easily pull or tweak something doing them um, and I think that is a wrap to be honest um, if you've enjoyed it please let us know down below if you want us to do any specific workouts or talk about any specific nutrition information and that kind of stuff please let us know down below that'd be much appreciated we got back we got a pull session next week yeah episode two will be a pull session which yep. we've just filmed um, so look out for that, that'll be out on Tim's channel next Friday um, and also this is obviously a good experience for me because Tim knows a lot more about the training than me um, so this actually lets me like, learn some stuff as well um, and yeah, hope you enjoyed today's yeah, video hope you enjoyed it guys, and I hope it was insightful and uh, yeah, as, as you said, just let us know down below what muscle groups you want us to cover uh, what training days or anything on nutrition, supplements, anything like that, and uh, we'll sit down and we'll we'll have a little, little chat about it. And we're also kind of considering moving this, potentially, maybe potentially in the future, into some form of podcast. Yeah. Because we both absolutely love podcasts. I like, listen to podcasts all the Same. time. I'd love just to sit down with someone and chat about something. Um, we both sit down and talk all the time about training anyway. So if yeah, let us know down below if, if in the future you would like us to turn this into a podcast as well. Yeah, because not, not anytime soon because obviously we want to build this series up first. Uh, but maybe in six months, a year yeah, time, um, like if this does well, if you guys like these con this content and these videos. So yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to, to like. <laughs> make sure to like, <laughs> make sure subscribe to, like, to both of our subscribe. channels if you're new. Tim Street Fitness, Thomas Rauchy obviously and our Instagrams, check them out. They'll all be in the description down yeah, below. Just, um, so just search for them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we hope you enjoyed it, guys. And don't forget to comment. Peace Thank out. You. Peace. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was all right. That was decent, mate. It was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, fuck, where's the button?